bone-in swordfish tomahawks. What's up, y'all? I'm Reed the Fishmonger, and today we're gonna fillet up a beautiful, locally caught swordfish. This fish was in the ocean yesterday, buried in nice overnight, and getting filleted up for the display case of Captain Clay's. But check this out. I'm gonna take off my glove, clean hand, now you see all that black stuff and silver. Before hosing it off, we're gonna remove the head and just get that out of the way. All right, we're gonna go underneath the gills here. Puncture that membrane. Swordfish are actually crazy how easy they are to cut through the bones. It's nuts for these giant fish Cutting through the bones is such an easy thing to do. Listen to that. That bill is solid. You can feel where the head starts and the meat begins. You wanna hit it right on that line and not lose out on any of that meat. All right. There we go. All right, we're also gonna chop off this giant dorsal fin so that way moving it around is a lot easier. All right, and we're gonna lob that right off. It looked easy cutting through that swordfish bone because I hit it on the spot that had the marrow spinal fluid when you hit those spots, it's much easier to cut through. If you went in between those vertebrae, much harder to cut through. Now, what would you guys do with this? I normally just get the little bit of meat that's out of there and use that towards a smoked fish dip or soup or tacos. But let me know, what would you do with the meat remaining in this fin? All right, now when I lift this up, you can see how this fish painted the cutting board with all of its mud and we're gonna get it hosed off and we're gonna clean off these cutting boards so that way once the meat is exposed, it's on a nice clean surface. This is cold water coming out of my hose. You don't wanna be hitting your fish with any warm water. All right, our swordfish has had a nice bath. Now we're ready to cut them up. All right, first we're gonna, we got a collarbone right there. Stick the tip of our knife right underneath that collarbone. Follow the bone's outline. When it comes to coming this way on the collarbone, we could follow the outline all the way up behind the head, but we're gonna be doing a bone in collar cut. So instead we're gonna go straight down like that. Now we're going to flip it over. We're gonna go underneath that collarbone, follow that outline. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. Trace that a little bit. Now we're gonna go straight down. Now we're just gonna go straight down Separate that. Now we've got the collars connected on both sides. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with that in a minute. All right, we're gonna roll them over. And look at that, even after hosing down, you're still getting some of this dark stuff from the swordfish, that's okay. Let's get our knife right in at that opening, making sure you're on top of the spine. We're gonna trace it all the way down. Make sure that you're on top of the spine. That swordfish spine is super easy to cut through but we're not gonna cut through today. So there we are at the center. Next step, tip of the knife, go all the way to the top of that tall spine. Use my fingers to lift up on the belly and the hyaloin. Look at that. Swordfish, you just cut through like butter. Now that's where the belly is, so you can cut through like that. Now that we're where the belly ends, if we continue doing that, we would lose a lot of meat on the second side. We're not gonna do that. We're going to go to the top of that spine. That way we can stick the tip of our knife in on the second side, making sure we don't lose any of that delicious swordfish meat. And there we go. Look at that. That is beautiful fish. All we gotta do is separate it. And there we go. That's how you flay the first side of your swordfish. Let's cut the second side. Second side, we're gonna do a little differently, almost inside out. We're gonna stick the tip of our knife right at that opening, and we're going to slide down, leaving our fish upside down, 
just the tip of your knife. You really, really only want the tip. Now we're going to make sure we're gliding on top of that skeleton. You can feel it with your knife. Now that we're at the center, we're gonna use the tip of our knife to go to the top of that spine. Nice, long, smooth motions, beautiful. Make sure we get right where we need to be. That's perfection. Now we can just pick up on this whole spine and slide underneath. Look at that. Wow, that is such a satisfying motion. Part of why I love cutting swordfish. Now where the belly ends, we can't do that, so we wanna make sure that we go to the other side of the spine, not losing any of that meat. And look at that. That is a clean picked swordfish skeleton if I've ever seen one. And for those that have thicker skin when you're cutting swordfish, cut it right on that spine, expose the bone marrow, with your same dirty gloves, pick it out and go to town. Mmm, it's like collagen and mercury concentrates, delicious. So I'm gonna save the rest of this. I'm either gonna grill it up, smoke it, pick the meat off, or you know, make jello shots out of it. Whatever, I'm not wasting it. All right. Now we've got our beautiful swordfish filleted up. We're gonna get it trimmed up and portioned for you guys. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the membrane of the swordfish. I like this long 12 inch Dexter knife for doing that. It just helps me get these long, smooth motions. And when we're doing this, we wanna get as close to the membrane as possible. It's like, thinner than paper, so it's so easy to cut through. We wanna still make sure we're getting as close to it as we can. I'd rather do a handful of motions and not lose any meat. Beautiful. Now you can see this point right here, there's no meat left. That is right where we're cutting it nothing left behind. We're gonna start cutting off portions. Now when it comes to cutting your swordfish, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. You can do forward and back. That works great. Look how beautiful the color is on that fish. Or if you have your knife all the way forward, you can do one long glide as well. So forward, back, long glide. They both work, just depends on what works for you and what's most comfortable as we're making these steaks. So check that out. You can see how smooth that is. There's no saw lines in there. So when it's going into a display case, it's super important. If you're cutting up your swordfish for a home consumption, it's less important, but it's still important. Have you ever put a hard sear on your swordfish in the ridges from the fish butcher not doing a good job, messed up your hard sear, having it even? Well, if not, you're doing it right. If so, well, maybe show them this video. All right, you guys, now it's time to play with this. This is off the head of the swordfish. These are the collarbones. We're going to make swordfish tomahawks. Typically, I'll only do that with a little bit larger swordfish. That way you get a, you know, a nicer steak out of it. But this is the size fish we have that was locally caught today. And I didn't want to miss the opportunity to show you guys how I make a swordfish tomahawk. So we're going to do it. So if you've seen any of my other videos where I'm cutting wings out of snappers, it's got this floating bone. You can see it a lot better on this swordfish. So look right here. Look at that. These two bones are sitting on top of each other. So you can actually just run your knife right underneath it. And it comes out that easily. Now there is, on these swordfish, there is some meat in here, but this meat really isn't ideal. Now, we're gonna flip it over. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. We're going to look right here. Look how cool that is. It's just like a bone resting on top, not connected, and you can just easily slide your knife right underneath. It's beautiful, thing of beauty. 
Love it. All right, you guys. Now we're going to cut them off of both sides. One down. And two down. I can go into your super stock, whatever you got going on. Now it comes time to trimming. You do have some bones right here. Kind of like a pin bone line. We're gonna go right in front of those bones. Shave them off. It's also on a bloodline too, so you're really not losing out on much doing that. Then we're gonna come over here. We're going to skin it. Get our knife flat. Beautiful. Now we're going to trim off some of that excess meat that can go to soups, tacos, whatever you got going on. A little bit more skin left on there. Shave that off. You guys can already see the shape going on. Now you got bone in, swordfish collar meat. The collars on swordfish is one of the fattiest parts of the swordfish, second to the belly. When you leave the bone in, you're getting even more moisture out of that, and it just makes a beautiful presentation. That's how you make bone in swordfish tomahawks. If you guys have never tried this before, you've got to. They are so good. The collar meat's one of my favorite parts of the swordfish, and I like it even better when it's got the bone in. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a killer day. See you soon.